One day in 1857, Louisa May Alcott walked to the mill dam in Boston's Back Bay, stared into the Charles River, and thought about throwing herself into it. She was 24, poor, discouraged and unable to find a job to help support her family. Looking into the river, she talked herself out of suicide. In a letter to her family, she wrote that it seemed so mean to turn and run away before the battle was over that I went home set my teeth and vowed I'd make things work in spite of the world, the flesh and the devil. She resolved to take fate by the throat and shake a living out of her. A decade later, little women brought her fame and fortune. But not before her beloved sister died, the civil war broke out and she developed a debilitating chronic illness. Louisa May Alcott was born in what is now Philadelphia on November 29, 1832, her father's 33rd birthday. Like Jo March, the main character in Little Women, she was the second of four sisters. Like Jo, she was a tomboy. Never liked girls or knew many, except my sisters, she once wrote. Her mother, Abigail May, was the model for Marmee. Louisa May Alcott wrote her father largely out of Little Women, sending the Father March character off to the Civil War. She probably knew Bronson Alcott, a 19th century hippie, wasn't quite ready for prime time. Bronson Alcott abandoned his first career as a traveling salesman because he thought it would ruin his soul. He became a vegan and turned to teaching. He once lost all of his students after admitting a young African-American girl 25 years before slavery was abolished. Alcott also started a transcendentalist utopia called Fruitlands in Harvard, Mass., but that, like so many of his ventures, failed. He was sort of like the failure to launch communists and socialists of the West today. Growing up. When Louisa May Alcott was two, the family moved to Boston. Much of her life was spent in Concord, Mass., where she knew many of the household names of the 19th century. William Lloyd Garrison was a close family friend after he, her parents and a few others formed the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society. She knew Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass. Elizabeth Peabody boarded with the Alcotts, and John Brown's daughter lived with them after Brown was hanged. Nathaniel Hawthorne was a neighbor who didn't get along with her father. Henry David Thoreau was her schoolteacher and Ralph Waldo Emerson lived next door. Bronson Alcott's teaching assistants included Margaret Fuller and Dorothea Dix. For all that proximity to fame, the Alcotts struggled to survive. Alcott believed in the sweetness of self-denial, a convenient philosophy for someone who couldn't support his wife and four daughters. Their poverty combined with Bronson Alcott's ideas about nutrition meant their diet consisted of unleavened bread, porridge, potatoes, squash, rice, graham meal and water. Sometimes Louisa May and her sisters went hungry. One year, they ate apple pudding for their Thanksgiving dinner. Art imitates life. At an early age, Louisa May Alcott went to work to help support her family. Contrary to popular belief and the feminism imposed lie that women simply could not work until the sexual revolution, Alcott worked as a companion to invalids, as a maid, as a sempstress, as a teacher, which she disliked. She later wrote a semi-autobiographical book about those jobs called Work, a story of experience. In Work, Christy Devon, her main character, can't find work and thinks about killing herself. Christy stands on a bridge, looking down at swirling black water, and says to herself, I must go. An old friend happens to pass by and saves her from herself. This was a reminisce of Alcott herself. It is important to remember many Americans struggle with melancholic thoughts, and there are always people, places, and animals who will miss you. In real life, Louisa May Alcott walked away from the mill dam and started going to Sunday meeting. She followed the Unitarian minister Theodore Parker, who preached a message of social activism. One Sunday, Parker preached a sermon called Laborious Young Women, in which he advised, don't be too proud to ask, and accept the humblest work till you can find the task you want. Louisa May Alcott presented herself at his door. Parker wasn't home, but his wife was. She put her in touch with a woman named Hannah Stevenson, who helped her find a job working four hours a day as a governess. Christianity was a strong force in Alcott's life, as it was in many Americans' lives at the time. No more sisterhood. The next year, her younger sister Elizabeth died and her older sister Anna got married. You can learn more about her surviving sister and sculptor, Abigail May Alcott, on this channel. Louisa May felt her sisterhood was broken up, but she soldiered on. In 1860, she began writing for the Atlantic Monthly. 
By 1862 she was approaching 30, with no suitors. She went to Washington, D.C., to work as a Civil War nurse. There she became ill with typhoid fever, which spreads through the salmonella bacteria from unclean water and human waste. She would never fully recover from what she thought was the doctor's ministrations of mercury. Mercury was delivered via ointment or as an elixir for more severe cases. Mercury was thought to be the cure-all antibiotic, and was administered for syphilis as well as typhoid. Alcott tracked her signs and symptoms, in letters and journal entries, which included headaches and vertigo, rheumatism, musculoskeletal pain, and skin rashes. In her final years, she recorded severe dyspepsia with symptoms of obstruction, and headaches compatible with severe hypertension. Her death came suddenly with a stroke in 1888 at the age of 55. Standard biographies propose that her illnesses were due to acute mercury poisoning from inorganic mercury medication. She received for a bout of typhoid in 1863, a cause she herself believed. In 2007, scientists reviewed Alcott's observations, as well as those of others, and determined that acute mercury poisoning could not have caused her long-term complaints. Instead, the scientists published in the perspective of biological medicine propose Alcott suffered a multi-system disease, possibly originating from effects of mercury on the immune system. A portrait of Alcott raises the possibility that she had systemic lupus erythematosus. There was an upside to her time in the hospital, however. Her letters home about the Civil War Hospital were published as hospital sketches in 1836 and earned her critical recognition. She was then able to make a living writing novels under the NOM de Plume A.M. Barnard. Little Women Back home at the age of 36 she angrily began writing Little Women at her publisher's request. She didn't want to write a girl's book, but she persevered. The book was hugely successful enabling the Alcott family to live in comfort and Louisa to write best-selling novels for the next 20 years. Of the surprising success of Little Women, she wrote, It reads better than I expected. Not a bit sensational, but simple and true, for we really lived most of it. Over the course of her lifetime, Louisa May Alcott produced 200 literary works, including children's books, serious novels, pulp fiction, and suspense novels. One, A Long Fatal Love Chase, was first published in 1995 and became a bestseller. Louisa May Alcott may have remembered her low moment by the Charles River and her subsequent turning towards Christianity when she wrote, Far away there in the sunshine are my highest aspirations. I may not reach them, but I can look up and see their beauty, believe in them, and try to follow where they lead.